Magicians have amazed people on numerous talent shows around the world. But only a few magicians are able to leave the mark with their amazing magic tricks. Also, it's only human to be curious about something. So, be it Stephen Brundage's amazing Rubik's Cube magic, or Jamie Raven's famous card trick. Hello and welcome back, and today we are going to figure out the secrets behind some of Got Talent's most famous magic tricks. So, let's get started. The first trick, the impossible Rubik's Cube magic. After his amazing performance in America's Got Talent, it's clear that there's no one like Stephen Brundage when it comes to solving a Rubik's Cube. Here's what this talented magician did in his act. Stephen starts off his act by mixing up a Rubik's Cube on all six sides, and then instantly solves the mixed Rubik's Cube just by tossing it up in the air. Next, he flips over the unsolved Rubik's Cube to magically solve it again in a jiffy. Thereafter, he had guest judge Reba hold a cube in her palm. He then tells another judge, Heidi, to name any random card out of the deck. Steven then rips off the corner part of that chosen card. Finally, to the amazement of everyone around, the ripped piece was revealed to be in a corner piece of the cube. So, how did he perform this almost impossible Rubik's Cube magic? Well, here's the secret. The trick consists of three major parts. First, tossing and solving the cube. Second, flipping over and solving the cube. And third, pulling out a torn piece of the selected card from inside his cube. Here, the first and second part were real and skill-based, while the third part was an illusion. Now, coming to the first part, when he threw the scrambled cube in the air to solve it on all sides. If you watch carefully, while he talked to the judges, he was mixing up the cube. He then asks Mel B if the Rubik's Cube is mixed up on all six sides, to which she agrees. Now, the cube that you see here is scrambled according to what Steven wanted, and he mixed it up while talking to the judges, and then he sets himself up to solve it in milliseconds. Also, the moment when he was about to toss the cube, he was only a few moves away from solving the cube. If you see carefully here, he is seen making the last few moves in his right hand, and you can see the cube moving just before he throws it in the air. Now, you'd think, how can he perform the last few moves in only milliseconds? Well, he already knows the puzzles on each side, and it's actually not that deep of a scramble. From here on, he knows what to do and solves it with one hand. One-handed solving is actually a very common skill in people who play with twisty puzzles. Also, there's a video of Steven where he makes the claim that he can solve almost 7 moves of that cube in less than a second. We have also pasted the link in the description for your reference. Now, coming to the second part of the trick, where he solves the cube just by flipping it over. Here, just before flipping it over, the cube he's holding in his hand was already solved on three sides, which he concealed from the camera, and only reveals the three unsolved sides to the judges. Otherwise, if he really did solve the whole thing, he would have shown the judges every side of the cube. Now the only thing he had to do was just flip over the cube to the three sides that are solved and make everyone think that it was all magic. But still, when did he solve the cube partially only on three sides? Well, if you notice, while he's showing the judges the mixed Rubik's Cube, he's still moving the pieces around. Otherwise, you all know that it is physically impossible to solve a cube as mixed as that in a millisecond. Here, he was actually making the moves to bring it to a stage where the cube is half solved. Also, to confirm the same, after he's done with the trick, there's a moment afterwards where he turns the upper face of the cube clockwise, which reveals that the top left face of the cube was not solved. Now, there's an algorithm as to how he made the cube solved on only three sides. Before revealing the algorithm, here are certain agreed key letters that specify exactly what moves should be made. There are six different letters for turning the Rubik's Cube, each for the six faces of the Rubik's Cube to be turned. F denotes the face of the cube facing the solver, B denotes its backside, R denotes the right face of the cube, L denotes the left face of the cube, U denotes the upper face, and finally, D denotes the lower face of the cube. Now, when it's only the letter, it means turning the corresponding face in a single turn of 90 degrees clockwise. Letter followed by an apostrophe mark, also known as prime, means turning the corresponding face a single turn 90 degrees counterclockwise. 
Any letter followed by two means turning the corresponding face two single turns, that is, turning it 180 degrees. Now that you're clear with the terms, here's the algorithm to make the cube solved only on three sides. U prime D L2 U B2 D2 B2 D2 L F prime U D prime R U prime F2 L F prime and the final step is B prime. This sets Steven up to make this amazing move. Coming to the final part of the trick, where he magically pulls out a torn piece of the random card selected from inside the square of his cube. Now, the deck which Steven brings out consists of all 52 cards. However, as you can see, while showing Heidi the deck, he shows her only 15 to 16 cards to choose from. Heidi indeed made a random choice of card, however, the choices were limited to only 15 cards. Why? Well, there's a trick to it. Even though it was a 52 card deck, the 15 cards shown to her already had their corners ripped off before the act. To confirm the same, if you see carefully in this frame, the cards he shows to Heidi all have their corner part already ripped off. So now, Heidi selects the Six of Diamonds. Notice when he removes the card from the deck, the bottom of that card did not appear. Obviously, he conceals it from everyone. So, when he tears the corner part of the card, there was nothing in his right hand, and as you know, all the corners were removed before the act. If you watch him tear the Six of Diamonds, you can see that he tears part of the card that does not come off with a small piece, and only pretends he was holding a corner. He did this for the sole reason of tricking you into thinking he tore the card. Also, there's no need for him to tear quite a few parts of the card that do not come off, but he still does so to persuade the audience. Now, how did he find the missing corner of the Six of Diamonds card from inside a square? For this part, he had the corners of each of the 15 cards already stored inside different squares in his cube. Also, a 3x3 Rubik's Cube has 27 squares. Now, assuming these six centerpieces are fixed to a core structure which cannot be separated, so this leaves almost 21 squares, inside which Steven had the option to put the corner pieces of almost 21 cards. That's the reason he only shows Heidi the 15 cards out of the whole deck, to be on the safer side. So now, Steven remembered which square contained the Six of Diamonds. Also, it doesn't matter which card Heidi selected, as he would have taken another square if it was another card. Finally, he takes out the missing corner from the square to end this amazing act. So finally, the last trick on our list. The incredible card trick. Jamie Raven, the master of misdirection, performed an incredible card trick on Britain's Got Talent where he left everyone amazed. Here's what he did. He brings along a deck which had a cartoon figure of a magician drawn on it and asks Simon to name any card he wants. He doesn't touch the deck the whole time. Simon selects the Seven of Hearts. Seven of Hearts. Then, Jamie takes the deck as the cards are rushed by one at a time, and the drawings become an animated cartoon. Finally, the magician on the deck of cards comes to life and magically finds out Simon's chosen card. So, how did Jamie make the cartoon magician to reveal Simon's exact choice of card? Well, before revealing the secret, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get instant notifications of our new video uploads. Now, let's quickly get to the secret. The deck he used for the trick is a gimmick deck, known as a cartoon deck, and there are two cartoon characters drawn on each card. Also, this deck has the cartoon pictures drawn on each of the cards. One side is the cartoon character just going through the motion and taking off his hat and pulling out one blank card while the other side of the card has a character revealing a particular card. The cards are arranged in a sequence, and every card picture that the cartoon character reveals has that real card placed below it. For example, if the cartoon character reveals Ace of Clubs, then below that card, there's an actual Ace of Clubs present. Also, for the cartoon deck to work, it needs to be in order. 
In this frame, as you can see, there's an ace of clubs card followed by a two of clubs. So, this confirms that the whole deck is arranged in such a manner that each card has a card placed over it with a cartoon drawing of that same card. Now, the presentation is what makes the trick impressive. If Jamie just said pick a card, and he grabbed the deck and took out the bottom card and showed the judges, and that card happened to be the card Simon chose, it wouldn't have been that impressive. But here, Jamie presented in a way that made everyone think that the whole deck was made for that one selected card, when in reality, it's just the bottom card that has the specific chosen card on it. Now, Jamie never touches the deck, which makes this trick tougher to execute than the common method, where the magician takes the chosen card out of the deck and goes with the sleight of hand to bring the chosen card at the bottom of the deck. Also, Jamie is quite good at creating stories around his act. Here, he gets a choice of card from Amanda and Alicia, which was the Nine of Clubs. Thereafter, he gives Simon the option to overrule the first selected card and chooses Seven of Hearts. So, the small talk he gave to the judges, in a way, forced Simon to change to Seven of Hearts, which was, after all, an easy to perform trick, as hearts were at the top of the deck. Now, Jamie knew hearts were at the top of the deck, so instead of taking out the card, he ran through the deck and counted seven cards. Here, the sixth card from the top had the Seven of Hearts picture, so he applies a pinky break in between the sixth and seventh card. Now, for those who don't know pinky break, it's a technique used by card magicians to secretly mark a spot in a deck or slight lift it up. Thereafter, using his thumb, he controls the Seven of Hearts pictured card and pulls it back. This clears the rest of the deck and allows him to push that card at the bottom of the deck using his palms. From the front side, everything looked normal. Then he rotates that card to the other side where the cartoon is pictured, revealing the Seven of Hearts. All this sleight of hand is done by Jamie away from the camera, and since he's a master of misdirection, he had everyone looking at the giant screen when he made the move to the bottom. Finally, Simon's chosen card is revealed to amaze everyone around. So guys, hope you got the secrets behind God Talent's most famous magic tricks. Which trick did you like the most? The Rubik's Cube magic? Or the amazing cartoon trick? And name any other magic trick you would like us to reveal. Let us know in the comments below. Do like and share this video with your friends on social media. For more such amazing things, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And finally, thanks for watching.